Hello. Yet another heat wave on the way this week, and um, unlike the one in July, this one is not quite as hot, but it's longer lasting through the rest of the week, through the weekend, and the start of next week. Temperatures will be unusually high for the UK. High pressure is dominating the weather at the moment, and it will continue to do so. The one exception, weather fronts that will continue to flirt with the far north and northwest of Scotland, bringing some cloud and outbreaks of rain here at times during the next few days. But as you can see elsewhere, it's cloud free, plenty of sunshine and temperatures rising day by day as a result. So Thursday is hotter than Wednesday with temperatures reaching 29 or 30 Celsius for the east of Scotland, mid to high 20s across the rest of Scotland into Northern Ireland and for much of England and Wales widely 30 to 33 Celsius. And then on Friday, those temperatures rise even further. We're looking at a slightly cooler day for eastern Scotland, but otherwise mid to high 20s widely away from the north and northwest of Scotland and low 30s widely across much of England and Wales. 34, possibly 35 Celsius, the top temperature, the hottest spot likely somewhere around the West Midlands into the West Country. Similar hot spots on Saturday with the highest temperature likely to be 35 or even 36 Celsius in one or two spots, but widely 33 Celsius across much of England and Wales. One exception, northeast England, eastern Scotland, which will be cooling down by this stage because of an increase in low cloud mist and fog. So some ha, some fret in places here, keeping things much cooler near the coast. And it will always be cooler in the far north and northwest of Scotland. It's worth bearing in mind temperatures won't, be no, won't just be unusual by day, but also by night those temperatures will stay up at 16 to 20 Celsius. So very warm nights coming up and hot days, mid 30s in places. And although this is still five degrees or so lower compared with July, it is unusually hot for the UK. We didn't see 35 Celsius on a single day in the 1980s, for example. And this is a more prolonged heat wave compared with July. So lasting throughout this week and into the start of next week. Now, I personally like hot weather, but I also understand that not everyone does. And for some, there can be serious health impacts. And I'd hope that despite all the sound and fury we see on social media with these kinds of weather forecasts, there are enough people who have some empathy to understand that people's health can be impacted. That's why we have an extreme heat warning, not just about the health impacts, but also about the increased risk from drowning from people jumping into random bodies of water when it gets very hot and infrastructure impacts, so impacts to transport, to uh, water supplies, to energy supplies. These kinds of impacts we saw during July and during previous heat waves. And uh, of course, that increased risk of wildfires, which is a particularly high risk at the moment. So uh, another hot day follows on Sunday. Once again, temperatures into the low to mid 30s in places. But by this stage, there's starting to be a bit more uncertain about the exact temperatures and cloud amounts and so on. And that's because if we go back to Wednesday of the jet stream as it evolves coming out of North America. Now at this stage there are two streams in the jet stream but they start to combine into one stream and the winds at the jet stream level start to get stronger, push across the Atlantic during the coming days. And by the weekend, this dip in the jet stream by Sunday, picking up an area of low pressure. Now, different computer models are saying different things in terms of how the jet stream at this point is positioned and how it interacts with these lows. And that makes a difference because by Sunday, some of these areas of low pressure could start to pick up some showers over the channel, for example, and could cause a bit of extra cloud cover around southern parts of the UK in particular. And as a result, that would impact temperatures. But uh, for most, Sunday's another sunny and very hot day. Chance as well further north of some showers or thunderstorms breaking out over higher parts of Scotland and northern England. But any showers on Sunday will be very isolated. For most, it's another sunny and hot day. However, by the start of next week, you'll see that jet stream, well, it's really diving to the south, out to the west of the UK, this dip in the jet stream, what we call a trough. So that's essentially an area of low pressure high up in the sky where the aeroplanes fly. And that combines with a surface area of low pressure to increasingly affect the UK. And that means that on Monday with those areas of low pressure, we're likely to see an increased chance of showers and thunderstorms breaking out. The biggest signal at the moment are for some fairly isolated showers to break out in the east of England as temperatures rise up to 30 
or beyond on Monday. But through the day, there is that chance that showers will start to develop more widely. They're going to be hit and miss. They're not going to affect everyone. But where they do occur, they could certainly be very heavy with the risk of thunder and lightning. Now that sets the scene for, well, really Tuesday and into Wednesday, those heavy showers breaking out. And as a result, and as a result of that jet stream dipping to the south, temperatures will start to decrease. And you can see that on the temperature trend graph here, these two meteograms. Well, the one from the bottom there shows the south, the one on the top shows the north, and these boxes show, the red boxes show the maximum temperature each day going out to the next couple of weeks. The red line here is the average, so you can see over the next five days, both in the south and the north, well above average. And then this slow decreasing trend into the start of next week. But those boxes, although they get bigger, indicating greater uncertainty for both north and south, they still remain above average for most of next week. So in between any showers and thunderstorms, I think we'll see A, an increase in humidity, but also still the potential for B, some higher than average temperatures. So still the potential for high 20s, even low 30s, especially at the start of next week. Similar thing here with rainfall, uh, run the computer model more than 50 times, each of these dotted lines for the south and for the north shows the rainfall trend into next week. So nothing for the next few days. And then both for the south and the north, these big spikes in rainfall. A different computer model runs, have different ideas about when we'll see the rainfall because most of it will be fairly showery rather than frontal. And that means these hit and miss showers, certainly at first, may not be that useful for recharging rivers, reservoirs, water supplies, and so on. But there is that signal, quite a strong signal from all these different models that we'll see uh, some rainfall through next week for both the south and the north. And next week with low pressure in charge does look likely to be increasingly showery with some heavy rain at times. By the end of next week, the signals are fairly muted. There's a lot of uncertainty, but it looks most likely that we'll see something closer to average weather for the UK, and that means low pressure towards the northwest, higher pressure towards the southwest, areas of rain or showers coming in, especially from the west, and temperatures much closer to average. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very hot over the next few days, a prolonged heat wave to come, health and infrastructure impacts likely. Stay up to date with the latest. We'll keep you updated on social media.